A warm good evening to our chief guest, Dr. Elias Gerald de Silva, the team of Secret Shares, Director Mr. Antonio Vian Norona, and the representative Ms. Swedel de Souza, our special invitee Dr. Rita Norona, the Director, Center for Development Studies and Education, the Management TYS, Campus Director Mrs. Misriya Javed, Principal Mrs. Grace Norona, Vice Principal Mrs. Jacinta De Costa, Campus Coordinator Mrs. Evet Pereira, and the staff TYS. The Yenapoya School, in collaboration with the Secret Shares, has organized this amazing session on the occasion of World Environment Day. He that plants trees loves others besides himself. Dr. Thomas Fuller. World Environment Day, celebrated on 5th June every year, is a very important day as it gives us the opportunity to review this fact about how much harm we have inflicted on nature and how do we compensate for this loss. The theme of World Environment Day 2021 is Ecosystem Restoration. This theme aims to prevent, halt, and reverse the degradation of ecosystems in every continent and in every ocean. Given the current scenario, humans need a clean and green environment, but the environment is dying. It's time now to start taking initiative and stop making excuses. A little effort also matters. On this note, without further ado, let's begin. Prayer does not change God, but it changes the one who prays. Let us invoke God's blessings on this occasion. I request Ms. Jean Braggs to lead us into prayer. When upon life's billows you are tempest old, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with the load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will keep singing as the day goes by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Thank you, ma'am, for truly taking us into a prayerful mode. A small cheer and great welcome makes a merry feast. Shakespeare. I request Mrs. Vinet Fernandez to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Gloria. If humanity has to live for a long time, you have to think like the earth. Act as the earth, because that is what you are. A very good evening to everyone gathered. Today is a special occasion as we, the Enapaya family, have come together through the virtual platform to celebrate the World Environment Day. Taking our evening further with warm words of reception, first and foremost, let us welcome the presence of the Almighty amidst us. The fragrance of flowers spreads only in the direction of the wind, but the goodness of a person spreads in all direction. Amidst us, we have such an inspiring personality 
Dr. Elias Gerald de Silva, who has battled against all odds and reached the pinnacle of success. We are profoundly elated to welcome the great guest speaker, and we are all eagerly awaiting to listen to your talk on COVID-19, Regeneration of Mother Nature. On behalf of the management, principal, vice principal, staff, I welcome you, sir, for your gracious presence. Thank you. Thank you. Words of reception goes to a special invitee who has graced to present in spite of a busy schedule. We are indeed fortunate enough to have Dr. Rita Noruna, Director of Center for Development, Studies and Education. She has worked in the field of social work for more than five decades and has been an inspiration to many environmentalists, social workers and students. On behalf of the TYS family, I extend an affable welcome to you, ma'am. One tree can start a forest. One word can frame a goal. One candle can wipe out darkness. And a true leader has the confidence to stand alone. This quote is apt for a personality like Mrs. Mishraya Javed, the campus director of the Enipoya School, who is a fountain head of illuminating ideas and a true inspiration to all of us. On behalf of all present here, I take the pleasure to welcome you, ma'am. In this life, we cannot do great things. We can only do small things with great love. This beautiful quote powerfully captures a significant personality, and we feel exceptionally blessed and fortunate to have Mrs. Grace Noronna as the principal of the Enopaya School. She is known for a great ideology, distinct vision, and focus on education and learning. On behalf of the TYS family, I extend a genial welcome to you, ma'am. Here's a hearty welcome, big enough to encompass you, Mrs. Jacinta de Costa, the vice principal of the TYS school. Under your guidance and leadership, may the Enipaya School reach the next levels of glory. Welcome you, ma'am. The journey of thousand miles begins with one big step. We are joined by a vibrant and a dynamic personality. I was particularly moved by the passion and the determination he advocates as the director of the Secret Shares. A cheerful welcome to you, Mr. Antonio Vian Norana and Ms. Swedel de Souza, the collaborator of the Secret Shares. And we will do the honors of introducing the guest speaker. Welcome to you, Mr. Vian and Ms. Swedel. Thank you for accepting our invite and making your presence here. An extra special word of welcome goes to all the teaching faculty of TYS institution who are the true backbone and who chisel and shape the lives of the students at TYS. Welcome to you all, dear teachers. I hope this day inspires ideas and discussions around the ways that we can make this environment a better place for you and for me. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Vinitma, and welcome to you too. I now request the participants to keep their mics muted, but feel free to use the chat box in case of queries, or you could wait till the end of the session to voice out the queries. The essence of great leadership is influence, not authority. Amidst us, we have this day our guest speaker, Dr. Elias Gerald de Silva, an influencer, motivator, and a change maker. He would be shedding light on the topic COVID-19, rejuvenation of Mother Earth. I request Ms. Swedel de Sosa, a representative of Secret Shares, to introduce our keynote speaker.
thank you ma'am good evening everyone it's a great ple great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker for today dr elias gerald de silva who is going to speak to us on covid-19 rejuvenation of mother nature on the occasion of world environment day 2021 dr gerald completed his msw from school of social work roshnilaya and mphil from chennai university he earned his phd in the year 2020 Dr Gerald has worked as project coordinator for rural and tribal development in the organization for the development of people for 4 years. He has published and presented research papers in national and international journals and conferences. As his interest and heart lies in environmental concern, he has been an active member of national and international organizations that work for the cause of environment. He is trained in disaster management under National Institute of Disaster Management, Home Ministry of India. Dr. Gerald worked as team manager in an international sports. Gerald has 20 years of experience in teaching and is currently an assistant professor in the PhD work at Saint Aloysius College, Mangalore. Those who know and have interacted with Dr. Gerald would agree with me that he is a person with positive energy, spreading joy to those around him, and brightens the place with his sense of humor. His compassion and concern towards nature and all its beings makes him the suitable speaker for today's occasion. On behalf of the organizing team, I welcome you, sir, for today's webinar. Thank you, Sweden. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sweden, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Sweden. Uh, first of all, I would like to. once again thank uh, the management of uh, anopaya school and sikreshas um, i also acknowledge the presence of my teacher professor dr professor rita norona ma'am could you please once uh, put on your video and show your face to the audience if not could you please speak few sentences yes ma'am how are you <laughs> nice gerald gerald good very yeah, nice nice to, nice to hear you please go yeah you want to thank say you. something ma'am thank you yeah yeah I'm waiting oh. to hear from you. Oh, thank you, ma'am. It's my proud privilege. Uh, thank you, ma'am, uh, because uh, you are my role model. Uh, when you were a teacher, uh, and uh, after that also, I had a lot of uh, interaction and association through so many organizations, and I found you are a genuine person who uh, work for the cause of environment and also. Uh, to the people who are marginalized and weaker sections thank you ma'am you are an inspiration to me and i am little nervous today because you are present uh, with my little uh, limited knowledge i will i would definitely try to do justice to the present uh, topic okay uh, thank you once uh, one and all for uh, your presence Uh, first and foremost uh, i would like to um, uh, say this that teachers are the most important stakeholders in education or in an uh, in educational institutions uh, dr abdul apj abdul kalam uh, rightly said 
teaching is a noble profession which shapes the character ability and future of an individual so i mean a lot because i find teachers can mold the personality of an individual especially when it comes to school teachers i think uh, when i say school teachers i do have too much of association when it comes to school teachers because my phd a, a, a research was done on primary school teachers especially of government schools here uh, my presentation would be more of my practical experiences i will not go to theoretical explanation as such because i feel uh, as teachers you play a significant role in molding the future of your students here you have an opportunity i think we have a curriculum we are confined to uh, the curriculum what is been given to us we teach have we ever tried to go beyond the curriculum i do not know uh, much uh, about the availability of uh, uh, opportunities for you to Uh, make uh, students sensitize about environment but as teachers you can play an important role in educating children in terms of environment <coughs> in terms of mother nature sorry uh i would like to start uh, with a small incident which happened uh, and um, it's a real incident happened uh, in uh, my life as well as uh, in my family uh, we were uh, living uh, in a joint family and my brother's daughter niece was studying in one of the primary schools and uh, one fine evening she came to me and told me uh, uncle today uh, we found a nest uh, in our garden Uh, uh where there were two eggs also inside the nest and uh, we uh, went to our class teacher and told her that uh, ma'am there is a uh, bird's nest and there are two eggs also uh, they look really beautiful what should we do then the teacher said, oh yes is it she didn't even go out and see and she said it seems you bring that nest along with the eggs and keep it in the showcase i mean most of the schools they have a showcase now i have a question to you as teachers any teacher what you would have done in this particular situation or if this happens to you what would you do yes if you wrong no issues i i just want to know how you connect yourself with sort of incidents which occur uh, accidentally or without your knowledge yes madam grace i would have uh, left the nest uh, wherever it uh, it was and then uh, allowed uh, the birds to come and uh, nest there and then i would have uh, watched them hatch and then yes. let the baby birds move wow that's great that is what i was expecting this is called a sensitive move towards nature which prompts you to do without your conscious or unconsciously shows that you are sensitive if teacher does like this what would the children do don't they do repeatedly when they found another nest somewhere don't you think we play a major role as madam grace said just now to see that children learn from a uh, an incident children learn from something new and children would definitely carry this message throughout their life this sensitiveness would definitely rejuvenate the nature 
So I think there we have, um, uh, there might have been three or two eggs. There were three birds, I mean two birds, would have been in life, in future. See, this is the awareness we need among teachers. We as teachers are supposed to be sensitive. This is a small incident I just quoted now. There are so many things happen without our knowledge as a teacher which students silently follow. So I have some, uh, 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 what do you call, other examples to tell. A child returns from uh, the school and starts doing homework. And normally parents guide them when they do their homework. And when uh, parents find uh, there is a little error or something where the child has written, uh, or a teacher might have taught them properly, but they might, uh, the teacher, uh, the parents might tell, uh, this is wrong. Your teacher has taught you wrong. But you see, the children would revolt and they would say, no, my teacher is right. You are wrong. What my teacher said is right, even though it is wrong. This is what we expect from children. So more than parents, teachers play a role. And teachers would definitely change their mindset. If teachers become role models, they become beautiful individuals for future. These are many things uh, I think you might have also come across when children are very close to teachers. They would, <coughs> sorry, they would definitely go a step further or forward to love them, to respect them. And this is the best opportunity for teachers to see that you mold them in a right way. So I think you are playing a significant role uh, to mold the children's personality. It doesn't mean that you only mold their personality theoretically, conceptualized, uh, what you call concepts. But more than that, we need teachers to expose children to realities. That's what in the morning I was talking to uh, children, I mean students. I was uh, trying to uh, put this uh, sentence to them. I, you know, they take it seriously that they respect their teachers. So teachers have a lot of opportunities. And I think you go one step further. Uh, and try to educate children in a right manner. And in this step, I mean, in this uh, particular uh, opportunity, you can try to make use of children to also educate them about the nature, about the environment. I would like to just mention uh, a, a real incident happened in one of the African uh, countries in a remote village, there was a group of tribes living in the remote forest doing agriculture. Uh, this, uh, this is uh, something to uh, uh, inform you about the food chain. Okay, just a hint. So uh, they were living happily, there were around four to five uh, families living together in a clan and uh, they started uh, after uh, as days went on years went on they started multiplying you know uh, tribal communities features they multiply very fast because uh, you know they are uh, uh, not more much into uh, the mainstreams of the society so they started multiplying as they multiplied the need for the demand for land, demand for food, demand for building houses increased. So, sorry. So, what they what they started doing? They started extending their farming land. As they started extending their land for for more need of more food and shelter, they came across wild animals, 
especially the lions. They actually come in contact with wild animals because you know if you don't disturb uh, uh, their habitation, then I don't think we will come in contact with wild animals. These started uh, what you call extending their farming land uh, for the sake of uh, shelter and food, uh, growing crops and all. And then this started because they had never experienced such uh, sort of incident. So what they started doing? What would they do if they uh, come uh, in contact with wild animal? Normally, what they do? Anybody? What would they do? Yes. They definitely kill the wild animals. Of course, right? I mean uh, to say uh, lions uh, are uh, aggressive and they any time can attack humans and humans are the most intelligent creatures on this earth uh, who can dominate, who can uh, survive uh, killing any other animal on this earth. So they, they of course had uh, the weapons to kill. So they started killing the lions. Okay, in the due course of time, the number of lions started deteriorating or decreasing. What do you think would be the next re result of this? I mean, what would happen if you uh, start killing the lions? Logically, logically, yes, anybody? Because you want to defend yourself for your self-defense, you started killing the lions. What would be the repercussion? Anybody? I'm simply posing questions so that uh, for me it makes a little comfortable to move on to the next. What would happen a result of this? Just uh, guess. Yes. Yes, madam, we need. Yeah, I Vinit. think the food, the food chain will be disturbed. The ecology system, the food chain will be disturbed. The lions will be extinct. Right. Food chain will be disturbed. Okay, fine. Uh, I uh, I would say um, you are right, but uh, specifically, specifically when we say it, the number of deers started increasing. As the number of lions started decreasing, number of deer started increasing. What would happen now? The food chain is disturbed now. Now, because of shortage of food available in the forest, because the num more number of deer and less availability of food in the forest, what happens then? Shortage of plants and forests. Yes. They would encroach, they, uh, uh, you know, uh, re res residential, uh, you know, where people yeah, are residing. Absolutely. absolutely. They started flocking into the uh, farmland of the tribals. You know, because that's a easy food for them available because. Uh, they can easily find, uh, they start moving around, they don't uh, uh, just uh, stop in one place, they keep moving. So what happened, these uh, in search of uh, food, these deers and other animals started flocking into the uh, farmland of the tribals. Tribals were helpless. Of course, they are not they are harmless, but still, what they started doing, they started killing deers. They killed lions, so now they have to, without any uh, reason, they have to kill the deers. You just think how human intervention, 
how humans disturb the food cycle this is what we need to think upon we need to ponder we need to find who is responsible for this sort of uh, disturbing food chain right so i just give an example this is really happened in one of the african villages or in the remote villages so what i'm trying to uh, tell you here is we as humans have not learned to live friendly with nature that's what <coughs> there is a beautiful saying ecosystem can live without people but people cannot live without ecosystem ecosystem is in uh, existence since millions of years human beings just arrived and they started plundering they started destroying the nature because of uh, in the name of development as i said in the morning also i am not against development we need development but not at the cost of nature not at the cost of environment not at the cost of farmers we have many examples where countries have reached to a uh, greater success uh, uh, without disturbing nature or maybe uh, i can give the best give a best example of uh, uh, singapore singapore model where singapore is presently uh, having 40 60 ratio urban and green you know 40 60 being a technologically driven uh, country and the most uh, developed country uh, they have maintained 60 40 ratio and their next agenda is to make it 50 50 uh, they have an agenda where they want to make it 50 50 how it is possible it is possible because humans have to live responsibly as it is said uh stitching time saves nine stitch too late is my fate it is not too late still there is time we have done enough damage to mother mother earth the damage which is done by humans is irreparable we have still time to rejuvenate we have to nurture the nature for that we need to do our uh, we need to put up our efforts so that we nurture the nature that's what uh, i was uh, just um, recommending um, uh, antonio to to say rejuvenation of uh, mother earth because it is wounded we have exploited we have uh, destroyed half of our uh life uh, the natural resource in the name of development so the natural resources have been uh, over exploited i think the water bodies are polluted the air is polluted uh, then the land is become infertile so it is said the uh, air we breathe the water we um, drink and the uh here we uh, the air we breathe the water we drink the food we eat is poisoned what is remaining as we all know that earth is covered with 75 to 76% of water how what is the percentage of water is clean for human consumption clean for human consumption whether it is fit for human consumption this is a question which bothers us only one person of water bodies are clean which are fit for human consumption remaining water bodies have been polluted and totally it's a disaster and of course we are uh, in the world where uh, we find global warming climate change we find uh, himalayan glaciers are melting uh, all over the world glaciers are melting uh rising sea level uh, ozone layer depletion uh burning of fossil fuels greenhouse effect my god what damage we have been making and we are uh, not bothered we live irresponsibly this is the reason why 
we need to think about how to rejuvenate our mother earth i always treat uh, my first mother is my mother and second mother is my our nature my nature i would say because i love nature of course when i said food chain when we talk about simple things a uh, food chain uh, you know a uh, grasshopper is eaten by a frog frog is eaten by a snake and snake is eaten by an eagle oh, this is a food chain you disturb one you start killing uh, there's um, frogs we hate frogs because they look very ugly and what would happen in the uh, due course of time the number of insects will multiply within no time and you would not be able to live on this earth because these insects will <coughs> insect will cover half of, half of the earth because there is no control because these insects have been controlled by natural food chain we disturb and we become victims of different uh, disasters and most of the disaster which happen nowadays are man made i mean i mean human made and we think they are natural of course uh, we we as humans always not bothered we give secondary importance to nature so uh, I, i would definitely uh, say that as teachers you start from you start from scratch you have the right opportunity to educate your children your students we are at the pg level now i think uh, uh, they are almo almost uh, what you call not in this world of uh, uh, environment or they are not much worried about this they are just looking forward for their uh, uh, what you call future maybe getting a very good job and uh, uh, settle down but children they are not much uh, into this uh, responsibilities now teacher and teachers have responsibility to educate your students so that they become nature loving people nature loving humans on this earth that could be done only by teachers i think apart from you are teaching you need to spare some time devote some time giving them some tips about how to love nature uh, gardening practices watering the plants uh, talking about uh, how forest helps us how trees uh, help us to live uh, i think uh, i i morning uh, i some for some it would be a repetition uh you know an average tree uh, which we find around us maybe in your campus or uh, in your uh, backyard or front yard you find an average tree how many liters of oxygen they produce per annum i know covid 19 pandemic has created so much havoc because many people died without the availability of oxygen right and these trees and plants produce oxygen i think that you are aware but have you ever tried to find out how many liters of oxygen per annum a tree produces an average tree anybody other than those who were there in the previous uh, session okay fine i uh, i will tell 3 lakh liters of oxygen per annum 3 lakh liters and do you know an average person like me and you need how many liters of oxygen per annum to live One lakh fifteen thousand liters of oxygen per annum. Just calculate with the money you spend now on oxygen per cylinder. You do you think how precious the flora is? How precious the trees are? How precious the plants are? They produce oxygen, and because of one average tree, we two or three of us live, and we cut them mercilessly. we love them cutting isn't it i i personally feel when i see someone cutting tree 
I get so uh, worried. I that night I don't sleep. Uh, it happens sometimes uh, when the uh, development goes on, when the road widening work goes on. Uh, they never avoid cutting trees. They just want to build. There are many countries who avoid cutting trees, or they do root relocation, relocating trees and all. Uh, that has been tried by one of our neighbors, that is uh, Mr. Jeet Roch, uh, who has tried this uh, uh, technique of relocation of trees. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have been uh, having a lot of success stories around the world, but we as uh, human beings are not responsible. We live irresponsibly. I would definitely appreciate I, I, I am not asking you to go and stop them. Uh, they uh, might have uh, been powerful or they have license to cut because uh, as you know that the people who are supposed to protect the environment, so-called the forest department or other administrator who are supposed to be safeguarding the interest of environment are like, double standard. They uh, they have no uh, sensitive attitude towards what is the importance of uh, the environment, so we can't help. But from our side, what we can do, we must do. So when I talk about trees or plants, they are direct benefits only we think about. Oh, oh there is a big tree which uh, gives us uh, mangoes or jackfruit or any other fruit oh, only that we know but indirectly how it gives life to microorganisms millions of microorganisms that we are not aware we are just uh, finding its direct benefit and we are happy so uh, I just give an example of this as a tree. There are so many other living organisms which are uh, living friendly with us and they are very important to us, which we are not aware. So uh, I can go on uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, this, about how environment uh, is important, how it is irresponsibly. Uh, being exploited. Uh, but as teachers, I think uh, you can uh, introduce um, uh, some projects for children. Maybe in the classroom, uh, you can talk to them about uh, uh, health and uh, environment, uh, interrelatedness of human life and environment how a uh, plant or a tree is useful for us because it gives oxygen from childhood if you give them this sort of education they become very serious they take this very seriously okay and uh, i know some of you are aware about all this but uh, we need to try seriously because these children are the future of our nation future of this uh, world and we need to uh, educate them now not only what is given in the books but beyond the books that is that could be done through giving them educating them on environment especially on natural environment that is mother earth i think there are so many stories on mother earth there are so many quotations on mother earth there are so many quotations on environment. You can pick one uh, quotation every day and make them to debate, uh, bring seriousness uh, among them. And of course, you find uh, I also have been asked to speak a little bit on waste management. Uh, I uh, was uh, in UAE. And uh, our uh, project was, uh, our projects were mainly uh, on uh, uh, laying uh, rubber grounds and also play schools. And I used to visit uh, uh, these uh, in, uh, Indian American School of Meadows, and there are many Indian American schools and all. 
and there are other school british schools and all oh, we used to visit and we find how clean the environment the surrounding is and i once uh, happened to uh, go around to uh, just to supervise the work and i found the children eat chocolates and they keep the wrapper in their pocket i have never seen them littering or throwing but here you just see uh, this happens in even in our pg a class a student see chocolate and just little throw them literally i get really uh, what you call pissed off i get angry and i tell students uh, are you in a civilized world you being in pg do this what can we expect from children so uh, i really got shocked how that education matters with children a small uh, chocolate wrapper the child keeps in a pocket or in the bag and she knows or he knows to uh, dispose it in a place where it is meant for this is a small sort of education which we give to children it starts from scratch small things make a big difference i think it is not actually counted but in the long run children will definitely learn to live responsibly also uh, you 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 can also introduce them the concept of there are uh, waste management concepts which uh, we normally uh, explain uh, maybe uh, re uh, reduce there are uh, five r's reduce reuse refill renew and um, we also recycle so i would definitely uh, expect you to uh, focus more on the concept of reduce reduce is a concept which can basically avoid or basically stop someone from contributing waste to the nature i think there are a lot of ways where i think uh, uh, the concept of reduce can be introduced when uh, children come to school they come with too many bags which are not necessary one bag in the hand one bag in another hand one is on the shoulder all plastic i think uh, uh, as teachers you can advise them to carry a single bag i which is, which can be used again and again i think we get uh, Uh, bags which are very strong of course um, and inside the bag there will be uh, many more bags we need to uh, educate uh, children to uh, children are supposed to in turn go and tell their parents that my teacher has told that i should not carry many bags i, I think if it is necessary of course i cannot force you not to uh, do that but if there is a reason or if there is a chance to avoid i think you definitely can avoid from my personal uh, experience i tell you since 25 years i don't know uh, uh, whether madam rita knows 25 years i have never bought anything from the uh, shop grocery shop or any when, when i go to market i carry my own bag and when i go to hotels or restaurants to uh, get food to buy food i carry the tiffin boxes still because i feel you go to restaurants they use so many plastics they use that um, uh, aluminum foil and all which are very dangerous to environment i think i might have Uh, reduced uh, i might have uh, saved uh, thousands and thousands of plastics i think every day we go to market while coming back from the market we carry 10 bags why can't we carry one bag we used to find uh, my mother my grandmother used to have one bag that very strong tangis bag we call very strong which is made of those um, what you call plastic strings and all very strong oh can be used years together that bag still i have i have got a jute bag which i can wash also 
but we are irresponsibly living we when we go to market we go without any fat we just want to do fashion we are worried about who is looking at me while carrying a bag we are so more conscious about our fashion conscious about other people who uh, what they think about me this is where we fail there are a lot of ways we can do this is a small example i give from my personal experience if everyone does that can be our problem of that uh, pachanadi dumping yard madam rita is very much present with us uh, i we are also associated with the organization and that pachanadi dumping yard issue and you know the amount of uh, waste which is generated by uh, the city people goes to pachanadi and their life is become miserable because of the waste which we produce in the cities because we live irresponsibly and i would definitely say uh, less use of plastic would definitely uh, would be a positive effort towards uh, uh, towards contributing uh, less uh, waste to the dumping yard uh, it is uh, it is not just a matter of we trying we must try and you also have to uh, start from your home Uh, otherwise i don't think we will learn in fact uh, there is a big challenge for the uh, mango city corporation in terms of waste segregation how many of us uh, do segregation while uh, we give our waste to the uh, civic workers we don't do because we are not uh, uh, responsible we think that it is not not my responsibility i just mix because it takes a consumes time to segregate why can't we keep two uh, bins so that we put wet waste in the dry waste so the work of the uh, civic workers or mcc uh, will be very much uh, easier are we trying this is very simple thing i can talk about this us together i of course uh antonio knows how, how much i emotionally get involved when i talk about all this because we have one paper on environmental studies for a uh, for a msw students and of course i can uh, uh, keep uh, uh, simple things matter a lot i think everyone in this uh, country or uh, in mangalo uh, tries to uh what you call uh, think about this sort of concept reducing i think that is the first step we must try to uh, rejuvenate nature the more we contribute waste to the nature more we destroy the nature and there are many other concept called reuse reuse also one of the second uh, most important concept if we find something is uh, become old we just throw we other or else we just give to this uh, uh, person who uh, some uh, comes to collect the, the scrap and gujri and all but do we sometimes think that we can make use of them again if it is possible try to keep it don't because some of the uh, waste uh, materials even the uh, scrap people throw because it is not useful to them only what is useful to them they would definitely try to use or sell that is what their business is and we as responsible people would definitely uh, try to reduce that and also try to reuse that would half of the problem will be solved i think uh, this is what is my uh, intention to tell that we try to re reduce and reuse then only we think about you know, recycle uh maybe the last uh, uh, what you call option uh, then uh, we talk about renewable and all uh, that uh, leads to the uh, higher level of uh, waste management but from our side uh, instead of managing waste why can't we reduce waste is my question don't we can't we try i think this is the wonderful way we can try to uh, seriously think about how we can positively nurture the nature how we can rejuvenate the nature by doing some positive things uh, when well, I, i would definitely uh, find most of you are trying to do it 
but those who are not doing please educate your children also in the classroom uh, when you, know, you can take one uh, hour session or sometimes for 15 minutes how to manage uh, waste by children children also produce waste how can you avoid producing waste instead of uh, you know, carrying everyday mineral water some people have a lot of money you find they uh, bring water bottle everyday uh, bisleri or kindle uh, they come why can't you uh, tell them that you carry a, a tupperware bottle or you get some uh, bottles which are uh, good for uh, storing water and uh, uh, ask them to avoid uh, don't you think they would not listen to you they will definitely listen and uh, many a times uh, children will bring uh, things uh, wrapped in plastic for teachers with, uh, when they bring birthday gift they will have too many plastics with them why can't you try to tell them that this is not right you need to learn to reduce you need to learn to avoid I would definitely appreciate if teachers try this. Very little thing. There's so many things which you can come across. I cannot list them out because it is where I've got limited time. I think almost I consume the most uh, most of my time only uh, two more minutes uh, uh, I have. <clears throat> but my earnest, uh, my sincere uh, request to teachers is please start reading on some. Uh, reading some material on how to nurture the nature. In turn, you impart this knowledge to the children. You disseminate, they will disseminate this information to their parents and would go on adding uh, positive vibes among the uh, people around you. And they would definitely try to learn something learn something positively and see that in future they uh, go on the footsteps which you have taught them i think uh, i can list out so many other things but i've got limited time uh, in case i get another opportunity i would definitely come and address you offline uh, that would be my in, uh, would be my uh, interest uh, because talking virtually uh, there is no much communication. I'm a person who allows to interact uh, uh, physically. I mean, try to talk to uh, teachers. I've tried to talking to teachers in many platforms uh, in Mangalore or even when I was in Mysore. And I've got a very small property in the heart of the city, Mangalore, uh, six cents. And uh, I have got around two. I recently built a new house where I have made provisions for rainwater harvesting. I made uh, all before I started constructing building, I saw that I planted uh, 12 types of trees and they are now growing. And it, my compound has become lush green. Uh, I really love uh, living with the green. And uh, also, it uh, when you go near them, you get some positive vibes uh, that I feel. Uh, I I think even Ritterman once I heard saying that you look at the green uh, and you, your eyes will not have problems. You will never develop a eyesight problems. That's what I don't have any problem with my eyesight. Thank you. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your words made us ponder on little things we could do as teachers to sensitize our students towards rejuvenation of our planet. Thank you for yet another time reminding us that the ecosystem can live without people, but we people cannot live without the ecosystem. The session is now open for questions. Dear participants, if any of you would like to ask questions, please go ahead. I don't mind any yes. question if you feel like asking me if I'm 
able to answer i would definitely answer i allow to your questions so we'll be providing a feedback form so that the teachers can ask you questions over there okay fine no issues uh, anjuni thank you sir gerald i now request mr antonio vian norona director secret shares to address the gathering good evening to all i am antonio vian norona the director of secret shares i would like to thank the yanapoya school for collaborating with us in celebrating the world environment day 2021 my hearty thanks to the to my teacher dr gerald de silva for accepting our invite to deliver the keynote address which was very informative and educative and i'm sure that there are many takeaways for the teachers as educators they play a vital role in developing the personalities of our future generations i especially thank the campus director mrs mishria javed for her support and for helping us spread awareness on the importance of environment and the changes that we have seen in our environment due to the covid-19 pandemic i thank the principal mrs grace norona for organizing such a wonderful webinar i would like to thank our special invitee dr rita norona the director of center for development studies and education ma'am has been an inspiration and a motivator to many environmentalists social workers and students she has been my guide as well secret shares is an online platform we are a team dedicated to our work in the field of mental health we provide a platform for children youth and adults to share their experiences through articles music dance poems etc we also conduct various activities on national and international importance this topic of environment we chose only because environment is one of the part that is very important to us and environment is very important in mental health so this is one of the major topics that we have chosen for this year for this world environment day 2021 we have created six quizzes for students and teachers the participants who have scored above 60% will receive an e certificate of excellence the links of the quizzes will be sent in the chat box we have also prepared a pledge towards our nature so kindly take the pledge as well and let the yanapoya school students and staff be the change thank you thank you sir that was indeed motivating and inspiring a grateful heart is a magnet of miracles i take this opportunity to thank god almighty for his presence heartfelt gratitude to dr elias gerald de silva for instilling in us the sense of responsibility we have towards our environment i am grateful to the team of secret shares led by mr antonio vian norona for this wonderful opportunity sincere thanks to dr rita norona for her presence and support extremely thankful to tys campus director mrs misriya javed principal mrs grace norona vice principal mrs jacinta de costa campus coordinator mrs evet perera for their constant support and guidance in all our endeavors a final thank you to the staff tys for being such amazing audience thank you one and all just to add a few lines i would like to thank dr de silva for your effective talk on the environment you made us feel sensitive towards nature which is very very important your suggestions to the teachers to educate children to be sensitive and friendly with nature 
as well as uh, to develop them into nature lovers. You also gave us tips to help the children to uh, create interest in them, maybe gardening or uh, watering the plants, just to give them small tasks like this, where we find them enjoying and uh, develop love for nature. Thank you, Dr. De Silva, for enlightening us again on the present scenario of Mother Earth, how we have wounded her and the result is really bad on the human kind. Next, um, we should also um, learn, learn to save nature and also natural resources for the benefit of mankind. I like the ideas of uh, your, uh, um, when you told us about the management, waste management and the three R's, reduce, recycle and reuse. I'm sure my colleagues have many takeaways from your talk and we really enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Dr. Silva. And we look forward for your face-to-face uh, uh, -face talk once again, once the, uh, once the uh, physical classes start, definitely we would love to hear you once again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Grace. It is a wonderful opportunity to me to share my views and experiences. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. This is Mishriya, campus director of the Yenapoya School and Yenapoya PU College. On behalf of the entire Yenapoya team, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our chief guest, uh, Dr. De Silva, for enlightening us with his informative speech. It was indeed an honor to have you amongst us on this occasion of World Environment Day, Doctor. I'm sure everybody appreciated your kind thoughts and motivational words and also your words of wisdom today morning, which you inculcated into the young mind. Your presence was indeed inspirational to all of us. We promise that we will do our best from our side to save our mother nature. Saving mother earth is the need of the hour. The emergence of COVID-19 has also shown just how disastrous the consequences of ecosystem loss can be. So yes, yes. doctor, even uh, we would love uh, to have your presence here once the pandemic is over. Let's hope and pray that the situation gets uh, better soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. I wait for that. Yes. A special and a heartfelt uh, thanks to Dr. Rita Norona, Director of Center for Development Studies and Education, for sparing her valuable time and uh, for being with us today. Thank you, Doctor. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the entire team of uh, Secret Chairs, especially Mr. Antonio Norona, for taking the initiative to organize this wonderful program for us. We will, be, we will be looking forward to having more of your presence and working with you in future events as awareness programs like these are very much required in today's world as we need to constantly remind us to work better towards ourselves as well as the society. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, one and all. Have a lovely weekend. I request the dignitaries and the program committee to stay back in the meeting for a while longer.
teachers, the, uh, the program coordinators, and uh, the MC, and also uh, those who propose a vote of thanks and welcome speech. Please uh, stay back for a screenshot. Uh, the chief guest is just going to join us. We had announced late, and so he had left the platform. He would come back. Kindly be there. Ma'am Misriya is there. Ma'am.